Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Lunch Bites webinar series. We're going to wait just a minute while folks' computers load the screen, and then we'll get started. So welcome to our Lunch Bites webinar series, which is held at noon central time on the second Tuesday of every month. Each webinar in our series will feature a 20 minute presentation followed by a short Q&A session. Feel free to ask questions as you think of them during today's presentation by typing them into the question window on your webinar control panel. The National Farm to School Network is um, the host of this webinar and you can see a little bit about our network here. All of our webinars are recorded and archived on our website, farmtoschool.org, which is where you will also find additional resources related to Farm to School, including links to Farm to School contacts in all 50 states. If you're new to Farm to School or have questions about food safety issues, local policy, or other general questions, please contact your state lead after today's webinar. While you're on our webinar, you can also join, I'm sorry, while you're on our website, you can also join our network and sign up for our email newsletters, which will let you know about future webinars and events. Today's panelists are um, Helen Dumbalis, our National Farm to School Network Policy and Strategic Partnerships Director, and Stacey Malstrom, our Public Relations and Outreach Manager. And I'm your host today, um, I'm Chelsea Simpson, the National Farm to School Network's Communications Manager. We also have a couple of folks who are gonna come on the line a little later and I'll introduce, let them introduce themselves during our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Here's a little bit more information about what the National Farm to School Network does. We're basically an information advocacy and networking hub connecting people in the farm to school movement to resources, people, and policy. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Helen and Stacy to get us started. Great, thanks, Chelsea. Hi, everyone. This is Helen Nambalas. Um, I'm going to get us started. Today, we're talking about CNR, or the reauthorization of the Child Nutrition Act. So this is a federal bill that includes the National School Lunch Program, School Breakfast, Summer Food Service Program, and many other child nutrition and school meal programs. This bill also includes the USDA Farm to School Grant Program, which is where we, the National Farm to School Network, are fo focusing our efforts this year. As you can see on the slide, the current bill, dubbed the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, is set to expire on September 30th of this year. So the work to draft the new bill has already started in Washington, D.C., and that's where all of you come into play, is we need your help to make sure that farm to school programs are better supported at the federal level with the reauthorized bill. If you want to learn more about the Child Nutrition Act's history and NFSN's process for evaluating the current bill, Please click on the link there on your slide and you can watch our previous webinar that happened last September that really walks through some of that background information on child nutrition and how we got to where we are today. Um, today we want to focus on the road ahead and how all of you can take, take action as we move throughout the year. So over the past year or more, we collected input from our partners, um, all of you to inform our asks of Congress for the Farm to School Program that's part of that Child Nutrition Act reauthorization process. So we're now in the concept phase of that policy process, which is where many groups jockey to get their ideas, commonly referred to as their marker bills, into the full draft of the Child Nutrition Act, which has been voted on by all of Congress here this year. So right now, we are working to ensure that our asks which I'll go through in a minute, that are outlined in our, in our Farm to School bill get incorporated into the full CNR package. And our best way to do that, as we'll talk about, is to get as much bipartisan support in Congress for those asks as, as possible once we move through this concept and into the authorization. So as you can see on this slide, a couple of weeks ago, Senators Cochran from Mississippi and Lakey from Vermont, and then Representatives Fortenberry from Nebraska and Fudge from Ohio introduced the Farm to School Act of 2015 into Congress. The bill numbers are here on the slide for you, the Senate bill and the House of Representative bill numbers. Um, the two committees that handle these issues that are charged with getting the reauthorization process started are your Senate Agriculture Committee and your House Education Committee. In partnership with the National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition, we've been working with these champions on a bipartisan and bipartisan 
uh, excuse me, a bipartisan and bicameral bill that fully includes preschool, summer, and after school programs into the USDA Farm to School Grant Program that increases mandatory annual funding for that grant program from $5 million to $15 million a year, that improves tribal schools' access to farm fresh and traditional foods, and finally, that improves program participation from beginning veteran and socially disadvantaged farmers. So all of these asks that are on this slide and the asks that are in this marker bill, the Farm to School Act, are really about improvements to the USDA Farm to School Grant Program to make Farm to School work better around the country. So now that our marker bill has been introduced, what we need is as many members of Congress as possible, aside from those four champions that are already on the bill, to sign on and to show their support for the Farm to School Act, which is where all of you come in. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Stacy so that she can talk about how all of you can get involved. Thanks, Helen. As we look ahead over the next few months, we're very aware that policymakers want to hear from people in their home districts and states. Your input matters to their decision making, and there are a number of ways you can show your support and encourage legislators to co-sponsor or endorse the Farm to School Act of 2015. If you can sign our letter to Congress as an organization, you can do so at the link here on the screen. The critical mass of organizational support can be very influential during our Hill visits. As we're going and talking with your senators and representatives, we'll take those lists of that list of organizations and highlight how many have signed on in their district to help them see the impact that it can have um, at home. If you're interested enough to be joining us for this webinar, then you should also take a moment now to open the link that you see there for our citizen sign-on and add your name to the growing list of concerned citizens and farm to school enthusiasts who want to see these programs grow in communities across the country. If you'd like to help us promote the citizen sign-on, whether through your newsletter or on social media, we do have some language that we'd be happy to provide, um, a small toolkit, and go ahead and contact us. You can either contact me um, or you can contact our policy associate, Natalie Tallis, and our email addresses will be on the screen at the end here. Although sign-ons are important, um, we are really would love to have a very robust list of organizations and citizens signed on. Legislators also want to hear directly from you, the people they represent. Few people actually are willing to pick up the phone and call their representative's office. Um, so oftentimes, it only takes a handful of phone calls to inspire action, whereas it can take a lot more signatures to have the same effect. If you are ready to call, if you're ready to pick up the phone and make an ask of your um, legislator at home, check in with our policy associate, Natalie Tallis, first to confirm the status of your representative and two senators in support for the bill. Um, if they've already supported the bill, um, it would make sense for you to thank them for their support with a card or email. But if you were to call and ask them to support it, it may look a little um, disorganized on our end. So check in with us and we will help you make sure that what you're whether you're calling to ask them for support or calling to thank them or writing to thank them, that that is streamlined and connected to the work that we're doing in DC as well. If they have not signed on, it would be great for you to call them and tell them why Farm to School is important to you, your kids, your communities, Tell them about the impacts of your farm to school work, especially if you have received a USDA farm to school grant. That's very important that they hear from those grantees. Or what a farm to school grant could help you achieve in your community if you were to receive it, if there were more funds available and, and access to you. When you call, don't forget to mention the bill number, especially if their staff is not already familiar with the bill. Um, you may find with some representatives that they have not already heard about the bill or don't have the exact number or their staff um, in the office that you're calling doesn't have it. So make sure that you tell them that bill number so they can write it down and connect it back to the correct marker bill. This approach also would work well as a letter if you would prefer to write a letter as opposed to calling. Um, but again that phone call has a really big impact that's going they know that that's gonna that took extra effort that you were willing to put in to make that call either way it's always great to follow up 
after a phone call with an email thanking staff for their time and consideration while reiterating your key points in writing. However, please do not contact members of Congress that do not represent your district. Contacting them as an outsider can actually be very detrimental to our relationship building efforts and can, in some cases, anger people enough for them to fight against our bill. So remember, coordinating with us and being in touch with your representative in your district are two really great ways to kind of help keep the keep us all organized together and keep us focused on the goal at hand. Even if you're not able or not allowed to take direct lobbying action and ask your members of Congress to support the Farm to School Act, you can always help educate them about what Farm to School is and the benefits it has for kids, farmers, and producers, and your community, without mentioning policy at all. Congressional recess, the time when policymakers are working from their home districts instead of DC, is the perfect time to set up a farm tour, host a legislator in the lunchroom event, or invite them to help in a school garden. You can coordinate with your local partners or state farm to school network to arrange a tour that hits on at least one aspect of farm to school, such as farmers and producers, school cafeterias and procurement, or kids' education programs and school gardens. But you'll probably want to start planning soon and sending out those invitations to your representatives because it can be difficult to schedule with your legislator during those short windows when they are home. So start thinking about that as a strategy over the next um, couple months um, as there are recesses approaching here at the end of March and the beginning of April. If you are interested in setting up a visit with your elected official, again, please connect with our policy associate. Natalie Tallis to check the status of their support for the bill, whether they've signed on, if they've expressed interest, and we can help you make those connections. Now I'm going to pass it back over to Helen to kind of walk us through what the next few months look like in terms of getting to that reauthorization in September. Great. Thanks, Stacey. So, now that you all have a better sense of um, the number of ways to get involved today, for example, that citizen sign-on and that organizational sign-on and really in the weeks ahead through the congressional recess, we just want to wrap up before we go to Q&A by laying out the road ahead for PNR. So as we discussed earlier, the Farm to School Act of 2015, that marker bill or ideas bill was introduced in Congress just a few weeks ago. So now the month of March, as Stacey was just saying, is the time to get additional members of Congress beyond those four champions to show their support for the bill and for organizations and citizens to show your support for the bill as well. In late April, the National Farm to School Network and our partner, the National Sustainable Ag Coalition, are planning to host a fly-in to Washington, D.C. Um, we want farm to school advocates to really be able to bring their voices straight to Capitol Hill. The target states and the target congressional districts for that fly-in are still being worked out, so stay tuned as we may need your help finding folks to come for that event if you do live in a target state or a target district. Um, this spring, as you can see here, two key committees, the two key committees for CNR will be putting together their versions of the reauthorization package. So again, what they're going to do is pull ideas from marker bills like the Farm to School Act and from ideas they get from folks around the country to inform their draft versions of the full CNR package. Once the chairs of those two committees, the Senate Ag and the House Education Committee, release their draft versions of the full bill, the committees will review them, they'll debate them, and then they'll amend them. And then finally, at some point, possibly this summer, the full Senate and the full House of Representatives, after the bills have made their way through the committees, will have their turn to review, debate, and amend those committee versions which ultimately the Senate and the House will have to agree on one final version of the bill that they will need to pass through the Senate and House and send to the President before the current bill expires at the end of September. So that again is just a, a quick overview of our timeline. As you can see, there are many steps along the way to get a bill reauthorized and thus, along with the opportunities that we have right now and in the next couple of weeks, there'll be additional opportunities for you all to get involved which we will certainly keep you updated on as those moments arise throughout the year. And with that, Kelsey, I think we are done, and we'll pass it back to you for Q&A. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Helen and Stacy. That was a really great overview. I um, just want to remind everyone uh, that if you have a question, you can type it in the questions area on your webinar control panel. All attendees will remain muted, so we're going to um, take these uh, take these questions from that control panel. I just want to start out by mentioning two things uh, that we've already gotten a couple questions about. First of all, links don't work uh, inside of webinars, so I apologize for that confusion. I did type the link to our um, CNR page here in the chat area, so all attendees should be able to see that, um, and that's where you will go to learn more about um, the, uh, the CNR effort that we're working on now and to find those citizen and organization sign-ons that um, Helen and Stacy mentioned. Um, and I'll just say it out loud too, for those of you who are listening to this recorded um, a little bit later, um, our website is farmtoschool.org and to find that specific landing page for our um, child nutrition reauthorization work, it's farmtoschool.org forward slash CNR 2015. So that's forward slash CNR 2015. And I also wanted to note that this webinar is being recorded. So if you're tuning in late and want to hear the beginning of it, um, Never fear, it'll be up on our website in the next week or two. So uh, with that housekeeping taken care of, um, I do have a couple questions coming in. Um, here we have a comment and a question. Uh, someone says the inclusion of preschool in uh, the farm to school bill is so important. Do you know if public, private, nonprofit, and all types of preschool will have access to this grant money? Yeah, great question, Chelsea. This is Helen. I can take that one. Um, and whoever asked that is absolutely right. Preschool um, and the earliest years of life are really formative years of life for developing healthy habits, which is why the National Farm to School Network is um, so excited about that provision in the bill. So the way, the way that the draft legislation has been written is that the, the full inclusion of early care settings would be for all early care settings that participate in the Child and Adult Care Food Program, or CACFP, um, which would mean then to the, the question that, that all of those early care settings, whether it's daycare settings or Head Starts or preschools or home daycares, if they're participating in CACFP, then they um, would be eligible um, and be able to apply for that grant program. <laughs> That's really helpful, Helen. Thanks. Here's another question for you. Is there a copy of the marker bill that's easily available for uh, folks to familiar, familiarize themselves with? Yeah, great question as well. We'd love for all of you to take a look at the actual language. So the best way to do that um, is to actually go to a website. Whoops, sorry, Helen, we had a little feedback there. Um, you were saying the best way is for folks to go to our website? Um, the best way, to, to, if you want to actually see the full language, the best way to do that is to go to um, thomas.gov. Um, it's basically the Library of Congress. And if you just go to thomas.gov, you can actually search for current legislation. And so the bill numbers that we provided earlier, if you go to thomas.gov, you can type in S-569 for Senate Bill 569 or HR 1061, House of Representatives 1061. Um, I have not checked this morning. Um, it takes a little while for them to get the bill actually put up on the Library of Congress website. It should be up there by now since it's been about a week and a half. But if any of you have um, problems actually accessing the legislation online, please just let us know. Um, and I just checked. Yes, it is up there now. So you can go to Thomas.gov and type those bill numbers in and look at the legislation. Yeah, and Helen, um, just to continue with our, our sending these links to the panelists in this uh, little chat area, is that a link that you could send over to me, um, or at least a link to the main website where people could go to find it, just to make sure we heard it right? Yes, you can put the links in here, Chelsea, as well. That sounds great. Okay, great. And I'll just, I'll just add one more note here. Um, Helen also mentioned earlier, um, in the presentation that we recorded a previous webinar a few months back about CNR and Helen did a great and in-depth presentation about it and how the child nutrition reauthorization will affect farm to school. And I also included that link in the chat window here. Uh, if you're viewing this later to find any of our archived webinars, you can go to the resources page on farmtoschool.org 
and sort the resources by webinar, and you'll see all of them there as well. So two ways to find that resource. Just a follow-up question, Helen, because I think the, the question we just had was around getting prepared to really advocate for this. What about other resources that people might need to make sure that when they, they call their representatives and senators, they're really on message? What else would you say people should do? And this might be a question for... Yeah, great question, Chelsea. Yep, I can start and then I'd love to pass it off to our folks at the National Sustainable Ag Coalition that are on the line that may want to add anything. So um, the best thing when you are talking to your elected officials or your staff um, about Farm to School is honestly just to tell your story. Um, many members of Congress may not know about Farm to School. They may not realize what's happening in their own community around school gardens or buying local farm products to go into school cafeterias. So I think the very best materials that you can come with are your own materials, you know, photos, or as Stacey was saying earlier, inviting them to actually come see Pharma School in action. Um, aside from that, we do have a, a what we call a one-pager, which is basically an overview fact sheet about the bill. Um, I, if it is not already, we'll confirm that that goes up on our website so that you all have access to that. It's basically a front and back um, shorthand version of the full bill that you all can then share with your members of Congress. Um, my other favorite handout is the benefits of Farm to School. If you just Google benefits of Farm to School, um, it's an NSSN handout that I find really effective because it basically walks through for elected officials and their staff the many different touch points that Farm to School has, whether it's child health or farm income or supporting community economic development. So aside from carrying your stories, I think carrying on the benefits of Farm to School fact sheet and the one pager for the Farm to School Act are really useful. Um, Eugene and, and Siobhan are on the line from the National Sustainable Ag Coalition, our partner group on this. Do y'all have anything you want to add here? So this is Eugene with uh, NSAC or the National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition. Thanks, Helen. Yeah. Um, those uh, materials you just mentioned, the one pager and the NFSN benefits of Farm to School uh, are really important uh, to share. Um, we've been bringing those to our on our health visits. And I think what Helen mentioned first, which is you know just bringing your personal stories um, really is, is key. Um, uh, legislators' uh, offices that we have been visiting, um, staff have been you know, saying they really um, want to hear uh, from folks in their district and their state and, and see what Farm to School is doing um, in their state and how it's impacting uh, their district, their state. So I think those uh, personal stories uh, really are, are critical. Thanks, Helen and Eugene. That's really helpful. I have just a couple short questions that I think I can answer for folks here. I have a couple questions about who they should contact to learn more about their legislator status. And Helen, I believe you said that the right person for that is Natalie Tallis, our policy associate, and her um, her email address is on the screen right now, natalie at farm to .org. And I have a related question here. Someone's talking about wanting to organize a event to raise awareness for this in her community. A great idea. And um, she's wanting to know how she can learn more and um, who she can, how she can learn which of her representatives or senators she might want to invite. Is that another question for Natalie, Helen? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you all, and that's the, what we were hoping for from this webinar, if you all want to kind of take action and figure out ways to organize folks in your community around this, yes, please follow up with Natalie. What we want to do is, as Stacey mentioned earlier, um, let you know about the status of your current members of Congress in terms of support. They may not officially already be on the bill, but we might be talking to them. So we just kind of want to make sure that the folks who are interested, interested in organizing things know where your members of Congress stand on this issue, um, if we know. Um, and we also just want to make sure that you're connected, as, as Kelsey said earlier, to our incredible network of folks. We have 51 state leads and eight regional leads, so we just want to make sure that you all are connected to those folks as well. So definitely follow up with Natalie if you'd like to, to do more. That's great. Here's a, a short question. Will the new legislation increase funding for school meals? It will not. Good question. So um, folks may remember that the 2010 version of CNR, the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act of 2010, 
did provide a six cent additional increase for school lunches. Attached to that are the nutrition standards that we've heard lots about in the media. So that is a bigger um, ask that goes beyond farm to school that touches on all um, school lunches. The School Nutrition Association and several members of Congress are going to be asking for that. Um, FNA, the School Nutrition Association, came out with their list of CNR policy priorities about a month ago, and they're asking for 35 cents more for lunch and breakfast. Um, so that's something that they'll be working on and a number of members of Congress. But this specific farm to school bill focuses on increasing funding for the farm to school grant program, not on the bigger picture with lunches. Here's another policy question. Do we know yet what the biggest obstacles are going to be in getting this bill passed? And are there any particular people or committees that we think need the most convincing right now? Yeah, so I'm not sure if that question is specific to getting the farm to school piece passed or the bigger bill in the CNR package. So I can I can respond to both briefly. Um, for farm to school, you know, as, as we saw with the introduction of this bill the week before last, um, we've got great bipartisan support already, um, which is really important, of course, in Congress to show that uh, this is an issue that reaches across the aisle. It's not an issue of Democrats or Republicans, that it works for everyone. So for Farm to School, I think if we can continue to show support for members of Congress, as Stacey talked about earlier, I think we have a strong potential for getting um, these asks for Farm to School included in that package. Regarding the bigger child nutrition bill, so the full package, everything from school lunch to nutrition standards to school breakfast and WIC, um, the program for women, infant, and children, th there will be obstacles this year. Of course, the biggest one is going to be the debate over the nutrition standards that I made reference to a minute ago. Um, those are standards that were created during that 2010 process, and um, there has been significant pushback um, as to the lack of funding available to introduce or implement those standards, things um, like plate waste. Um, so that that debate will continue this year, and uh, that could be something that holds the bill up from getting completed by September. Uh, but it's also something that um, could be sorted out this year. It just remains to be seen. So, Helen, I'm wondering if you uh, would take a moment to dig in a little deeper on the issue of calling your elected officials with me, um, just because a lot of people, you know, haven't done this before. And so I'm going to ask you a few different questions about this. First of all, how long do you think it usually takes people to make this call? Do you have to wait on hold? Is it um, are you going to have to go through a menu of, of items to get to the person you need to speak to? Yeah, great question. So. Um, the first step is actually, if for folks who don't know, to make sure you know who um, represents you. So you can, if you just go into Google, you can just type in, find out who represents me. And what you do is you enter your zip code um, into the website that pop up, and you can find out your two senators and your one representative. Um, from there, you can actually just get directed to the website for each of those elected officials, um, where you can make a phone call. They each have a phone number in Washington, D.C., but they also have phone numbers um, in the state that they represent if they're a senator or in the district that they represent if they're a representative. Once you pick up the phone and make that call, um, a staff person will answer, and they will ask what it is you're calling about. You can say farm to school, or you can just more generally say child nutrition, and they will direct you to the right person to take your call. Um, from there, you may get someone immediately which is great if you do. Um, you can perhaps be on the phone within two minutes. You may find someone who is available and wants to chat and they want to speak for longer. Um, if you get a voicemail, you always want to just make sure you give enough information in that voicemail that they know what you're calling about, that you're calling about child nutrition issues and farm to school, um, and then they can get back in touch with you. But um, as Stacy said earlier, the bottom line is that phone calls and inviting the members of Congress and their staff to see you in action in doing farm to school activities is really um, a, a great opportunity to provide them. And what might somebody actually say when they get on the line? Would they just start out by being direct and saying, you know, my name is Chelsea, for example, and I'm calling to talk to you about how important the child nutrition 
you know, reauthorization process is to me or how important farm to school is to me. How do you start out? Do you need to say the bill number right away? How do you start that conversation? Yeah, great question. Um, you do not need to start out by saying the bill number. Advocacy is really about relationship building. And so what you want to do, and, you know, of course, this is easier in person than it is over the phone, but just by starting over the phone, um, just introducing yourself, you know, saying I'm with so-and-so farm or so-and-so school or I'm a parent advocate, just giving a brief introduction, asking the person on the other end of the line a few questions about themselves. Are you from, you know, Kansas? Are you from, you know, whatever district you're calling from? Just try to try to build some rapport because it really is about that relationship building. You want to have a relationship with them that goes beyond that phone call. Um, and then just uh, – Starting out by saying, you know, I wanted to talk to you about child nutrition and farm to school issues and wanted to see if we could set up a time to meet or show you farm to school in action. Um, you don't need to jump right off the bat and necessarily talk about the bill, um, especially if you don't know them already. If you do know them um, or if you're leaving a message, you certainly can say, hey, you know, I, I want to check in and introduce myself and ask you about the Farm to School Act and where my, mem my member of Congress stands on this issue. But you don't need to do that right away. And like you said earlier, if you do happen to be someone who's already benefited from the USDA Farm to School grants in the past, then that's certainly something that, a story that you want to tell, um, you know, how this has impacted you and, and your community. But what if you're, what if you're not quite that involved with Farm to School yet? You're, you're a believer, you think this is you know, super important, um, you know, maybe you're a volunteer or you're a teacher, is it, is it still a, is it still a valid story that you can communicate? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all have stories to tell regardless of our role in farm to school or child nutrition, you know, we all have experiences. And at the, at the, at the end of the day, members of Congress um, want to hear from their constituents more than they want to hear from the folks um, advocating in D.C. because you all are the ones that get them elected and they, they need to hear from the people that they represent. So even if you haven't gotten a farm to school grant, even if you haven't applied for one, um, you are on this webinar, of course, for some reason because you have some interest in farm to school. And so what you need to do is just talk to them about why farm to school matters to you and your community and just kind of start where you're at. And that's what they want to hear. One more question about this, and this is something I think a lot. I think I'm always sort of worried that I'll break something. In other words, that I'll say something wrong, and I, you know, I feel like these issues are so important. Is there anything that people should be worried about when, you know, can can you make a misstep here as long as you're polite? Is there something you should, you know, do people need to be worried about that, or is it something you should just sort of relax and go with it? Yeah, great question. It, um this is something about our, our political process that, um, you know, is just unfortunate is that it feels daunting and it feels scary and it feels unapproachable. But at the end of the day, um, as I said earlier, you all are the experts, um, you know, in whatever it is you do, whether you do farm to school every day or if it's something you do as a volunteer, you have the stories to tell and the messages to convey. And so just being yourself at the end of the day is absolutely the most important thing. Um, you know, not feeling that you need to, um, you know, say things a certain way, but just telling your story is what really is important. That's really, really helpful, Helen. Thanks for helping me dig into that phone call strategy a little bit, because I know, as you said a couple times earlier, it's, you know, emails are great, but really those building those relationships are so key. And you've done a great job of really lining out exactly how to make that happen. <laughs> Well, we're pretty much at the end of our questions here. We have a couple specific questions that aren't quite as related to this bill directly. Uh, so if you've got a question that wasn't answered uh, that we didn't have time for today, I'd encourage you to email one of the folks listed here on the screen and uh, we'll make sure to connect you with the right person to answer your question. And just another reminder that this was being recorded. Uh, so you should be able to share this webinar and view it later in our webinar archives on our resources page. Um, are there any final comments from any of our presenters today? Great. Well, I just want to thank you all for the fantastic presentation and to thank all of our attendees for being with us and taking the time to learn about this. And more importantly, 
being so interested in uh, being advocates. So good luck making your phone calls, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.